Here we have two Jackintoshes set up to run as Hackintoshes in the month of Marchintosh. Let's get to it. Greetings, and welcome to the Power of Vintage. In a previous video, I set up these two awesome computers to run the Basilisk 2 Macintosh emulation software. Now, there was a couple of steps that we went through. I kind of go, to, if you want to learn how that, how that works, go to see my other video. I also tried it on the third computer, my Mega ST with an accelerator as well as a VGA card in it. And I failed not because of the Basilisk software, but because of the stability of the machine. All right, but in today's video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna dive into a little more detail uh, in how, this, how these computers run, what kind of things can you do with them, and then just play around with them a little bit. So first off, we're gonna start with both, both of these computers, we're gonna start them in two color, black and white, monochrome, whatever you wanna call it mode, uh, and, and actually do some benchmarking. And we do that benchmarking just because the speedometer software requires black and white in order to do some of the video testing, at least the way I have it set up, all right? So we're going to start with that. You can kind of see how they, how they work. Uh, and, and that also, that black and white two-color monochrome mode allows them both to run at, in native environment. They're not emulating the, uh, the video output, right? We'll then run them in 256 color mode. And in both instances, they're going to be doing emulation. And there's, going to, there's actually quite a bit of work that's being put on the processor in order to do that, which is why it's recommended, if you're going to do this on an Atari ST, that you have an accelerator that's at least a 68 or 30 or more, that, such that it has an MMU. And the MMU does that graphics emulation. One, some, you know, it's, it's cool. You kind of saw that working on the Falcon the last time a little bit. What's cool, though, is seeing that graphical emulation on the 520ST uh, in a 640 by 480 resolution with 256 colors. It's not magic <laughs> and it's not perfect, but it is interesting. All right, we'll start with the 520ST. I'll uh, change the video and we'll go to looking it out on the screen. Okay, starting with the 520ST, I was going to try to use the big TV screen over there in monochrome mode. Unfortunately, I didn't want to cooperate and didn't want to sync to the high resolution mode from the Atari ST. Not sure why, but we'll, it, it syncs per perfectly fine in color. We, I could have plugged in another monitor, but then I had to figure out what to do with the sound. That's fine. So here we go. Boom. Really is a crisp, clean screen. Sorry about the flicker. We'll get... Uh, Mint started. Woo. Better, much better. Okay, less flickery. So what we're gonna do, I believe is it here? Yes. It says Mac EMU. We'll do Basilisk program. There we go. All right, Mac 2, boom, boom, boom. Yep, yep, we have the sound on. We're gonna pick, in this case, native only. We're not gonna do MMU acceleration. Verify that that's the case. Here, let's do this. There we go. All right. Happy Mac, welcome to Macintosh. Let's adjust this, get a better, more straight on view of this lovely desktop. Okay, 
Here we go. Let's just take a look at this. Black and white, 640 by 400. All right, what we're gonna do, we're gonna start with the benchmarking software. Speedometer. Get that up here. Hardware information. We got the 6030, no FPU, but we have an MMU. We got a whole load of RAM. Looking good in this case, all right. Video output. We're running 6.5.3. Looking good. All right, so let's do some tests. I'm gonna run all tests. And we'll just fast forward through it and, and end up with the results. All right, the tests are done. I'm sorry for the flickery mess here. Yeah, there we go, it's a little bit better. All right, let's, uh, looking at all these tests in general, what you'll see is that the, the 1.0 is a Quadra 605, that, which is running a 60040, at 25 megahertz, a 68 to 40 um, without an MMU. All right, so this is the, the I think it's the LC variant, not the not the EC, but an LC variant that does not have an FPU in it. Has an MMU, but no FPU. All right, so this guy, where it looks like we're running at around, oh, half to, you know, 50 per 30 percent as much to as much as 70 percent of what a Quadra 605 is. In this case, an aggregate is about 60 percent. Take a look at that there. And we can do some other benchmarks. Let's do some system comparison. You can kind of see how does this machine compare against. So this is the 50, 50 megahertz SEO 30. Let's see what that looks like. All right, so it's 50 megahertz SEO 30 is a bit better across the board. This is a 50 megahertz 68030, a little bit different. Let's look at a, oh, uh, let's see. A Mac, Mac Classic 2, substantially faster. Let's see here, down here. Anything else there? So all the power books and power stuff, you know, Mac LC. Again, this this outperforms a Mac LC, which would have been an equivalent of the time. You don't. We're not looking at color at the moment. Uh, the video output. So those other machines, the Macintosh is the Macintosh two series of computers would outperform this in, in color output substantially, uh, just because we're <laughs> running with the effectively kind of like an EGA uh, capability uh, from a PC perspective versus VGA-like capability out of those, the Macintosh 2s. All right, that's that there. Go now, let's just take a look at one black and white game here, Civilization 1. There is a black and white version uh, that will run. Yeah, it should go. Here we have it. It actually doesn't look too bad. It actually looks relatively crisp for what it is. Given we have black and white, we can play Civilization 1. 
Now, I, we can play this natively on the Atari ST in an EGA style mode, so I don't think that this is necessarily where we want to be from a playing video games perspective. It works. It works great. Not a lot of lag because we're running in native mode. So let's exit out of here. We'll quit. And we're going to try something else. Okay, we're now taking a look at the 520ST, and what we're going to do now is we're now going to try to run, or we will run, the emu Basilisk emulation software, emulating 640 by 480 color, 256 color, using a shifter chip and the MMU on the 68030. So we've loaded up into Mint, the Mint desktop. First thing we're going to do here, because I'm running a medium resolution, we're going to change this. To ST low. Yes, yes, yes. There we go. That looks prettier, doesn't it? All right. And here we got the Mac EMU. We're going to load a Basilisk. And in this case, we're not doing native. We're doing MMU acceleration instead. And we will hit start. And what you will see is you'll see that basically what's going to happen, it's going to render every other line. So it's not a perfect experience by in any way, shape, or form, but it is usable, especially if you use a, an old school monitor. Now, there are some tricks up the sleeve as well. So you can see the Welcome Macintosh, Mac OS. With large photos, large images, it works. I believe it's probably doing a grayscale, 256 grayscale or grays. We can change that to colors in just a second once it boots up. But as you can see, in a macro environment, you can actually see things. It makes sense. What you, what you lose out on is a lot of the fidelity and the smaller text. But again, as I mentioned, there's some tricks up the sleeve in order to adjust that. And the main trick that was put in place, by, I believe by Agrilund, the guy who was adapting this for the Atari ST. Oh yeah, because I didn't, I didn't shut down. Okay. All right. You can see here, you can see all the fun, well, you can see the various different systems and such, but you can press the undo button on the keyboard. And what that will do is it zooms in to a sub portion of the screen. And you can just move to the edge and adjust. And we're gonna change from 256 grays to 256 colors. And now you see the color. We can un turn off undo and you, you have the color here. You can see the macro view as well. You can s get a good idea of what's going on. Is it, again, is it perfect? No. But is it cool? Yes, <laughs> that's the best part about it. So we'll hit the undo button again and we'll just take a look at this. We'll actually, let's load up Civilization, the original Civilization in color. So we can zoom in and get a much cleaner image. Text, not very legible. Start a new game. Oh, well, I guess the sound is there. Never mind. It just stopped playing. If you ever want to read text, you can hit undo. We will go Emperor Toughest, Seven Civilizations. We will do a custom civilization. Looks like we are 
the custom Germans. There we are. And looking at the play field, obviously the, <laughs> it, it isn't the finest resolution. Is it better than the EGA? No. I think the EGA and the Atari ST is actually very playable. This is not so playable in this fashion, right, with the, with the full size. Zooming in, it looks fine. Would I have done this as a little kid if this was my only option? I probably would have done this all day long, right? This is an interesting an interesting way to use this. Now, we have Civilization 1 here, and we'll just exit out now. We're going to quit. Yes, quit. All right, and we'll zoom in again. Warcraft 2 will not work on this in, in its current state. It could potentially. I, there's a hack in place that I could possibly put in. It, it only runs on a 6840 or greater. This is a 6830, and it detects it as a 6830. So unless I, I put that hack in, I'm not going to be able to do that, run that. Okay, so that, that's where that is. Let's go to Civilization 3, Civilization 2, excuse me. And take a look at Civ 2. A game that would not run on Atari ST. Again, the sound is not the best because what it's trying to do, it, it's trying to cram a lot more sound output through the channels that the... Uh, the YM chip has on this uh, this Atari ST, but you can recognize for what it is. Let's start a new game. You can read this barely. Small, normal, and large size map. We go for a large size map. Okay. We'll go for Deity Toughest. Seven Civilizations. And here we go. Oh, not quite there. I gotta, I gotta pick which kind of castle I have. If you want to see the comparison as to how it runs on a Macintosh, there are plenty of videos on, on YouTube to, to do the comparison. Obviously, this does not run as well. It is The video is significantly worse. If you zoom in, it's fine. It looks great. Uh, and the sound, obviously, is substantially worse. But it works. <laughs> and uh, it, we'll, we'll get this, this world built here. All right, we have irrigation, mining, alpha, co bronze working, code of laws, and roads. There we go. There we have it. And as you can see, is it playable? Is it playable at this level? Kind of. It's not the best resolution, obviously. It's terrible resolution, actually. But hey, zooming in, it looks okay. It's actually not too bad. We're hopeless. All right. I think that's enough. The game will continue to play. You can save the game. You can play it as it is. Let me exit out. I hope you enjoyed this. We're going to go on now to... The Atari Falcon. You can see that it is runnable. <laughs> is it fully usable? Is it useful? Uh, that begs a question. I, I think the undo zoom in feature actually makes this. You know, would someone be willing to do this? I think there are folks who would be willing to do this. Is it the best experience? Nah. <laughs> this Hackintosh is kind of, eh, interesting. It is a, it is a, 
fantastic stunt. And it works. All right, time for the Atari Falcon next. We're now booting up the Atari Falcon. In order to demonstrate this and the Atari Falcon, we are not going to run in Mint because the two color mode doesn't like Mint. So we'll go to this CT63 games. Set the video. We're going to pick ST high. There we go. All right. It doesn't look the best on this screen, but it still works. We're good. We're going to go to Mac EMU, pull up Basilisk. And in this case, we're going to change a few things again. We're going to get turn off MMU acceleration, native only. We're still using the Quadra. I'm leaving sound off because there are issues apparently. Sound doesn't seem to like running on the Falcon. Again, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna be, make sure we get the right ROM file. Reselect it. There we go. Starting up and looking good. We are black and white, 640 by 400, just like the Atari 520ST. We got civilization. We'll go civ data black and white. There we are. And we're running it in black and white here. And here we have it. I actually think it looked better on the Atari ST although it was on a, a, a CRT as well, so that helps, I'm sure. Okay. Runs pretty darn quick here. We're gonna quit that, and now we're gonna run the benchmarking software. As you can see with this, we're, it's recognizing the computer, even though it's a 68060, it has a 68040. It doesn't recognize the FPU. Again, there's a lot of things that aren't quite working with the, the version of Basilisk 2 that works on the Falcon oh, with the CT60, CT63. There are other accelerators that work differently with different versions, if that makes sense. All right, let's do the tests. We'll run all tests. Remember the Quadra 605 with a 68040LC running at 25 megahertz is the benchmark, is the 1.0. So in this case, we're 2.2 times faster, 7.4 times faster in math. All right, color benchmarks, right? <laughs> Again, the graphics, because what we're doing is we're actually, uh, this is not as fast uh, as what you would see on a, Mac, on a Mac here. However, from a CPU perspective, we're nearly three times as fast as a 60, uh, Quadra 605 
with a 68040 running at 25 megahertz. 60, 68040 um, LC version running at 25 megahertz. Is this the fastest Mac? Is it not? Don't know. But it is faster than those. Let's let's do some comparison. All right, so this machine is to the left. Well, let's pick a couple of machines. Let's pick a Centris 650. So this is running a 60 or 40 running at 40 megahertz. All right. There are some significant differences here, right? Centra 650 is very similar to the Quadra 650. Let's see. Ah, not sure what that Miro is up here. Miro, one megabyte. The standard 650. All right, we are faster than that. Actually, significantly faster. In most, in most of these, these different benchmarks here. Take a look at the Quad, Quadra 650. Ah, so that, that has a full fat. 68 or 40. That's what, where the math is coming from. All right. Again, this is, this is a benchmark. Does it work? Yes, it does. This is faster than all Macs. Mac 2s? No. 68k Macs. Is this optimized? Definitely not. This is still really much, very much a beta version of, the, of this software. So it takes a bit to get it to run. As you can tell, sound is not working. Um, not everything works perfectly, but is it cool? Yes, this is awesome. So the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to reboot the computer. We're going to quit out here. Yeah, we'll just cancel that. We'll just log out, shut down. All right, so what we're going to do now, we are going to reboot in RGB mode and then run the color version. All right, so in order to get this to work with uh, effectively 640 by 480 resolution and 256 colors, we have to set this to overscan and to 64K colors. And what this allows us to do is fully emulate the Macintosh color palette, which is different than the Atari. We need that higher, both the slightly higher resolution and the higher colors in order to make that work. So we're a couple of things we're going to have to change here. So video, we're going to turn off native, turn off MMU acceleration, and we are good. Again, sound, I've not been able to get sound to work. On the Falcon, that is. Okay, we're booting up into 20, 256 grays, so grayscale. We'll just convert this to color. Once we're booted up, here we go. Okay. We could run speedometer again. I don't. I, I think we're just going to see the color just fully drag this thing down because again we're we're emulating the the graphics now. So let's open up Civilization One. We'll run Civilization One briefly. Bump load up Civilization Two. You would have seen that me testing that out in a previous video in the past, and then we'll do Warcraft. 
what you see here is obviously it's a lot slower because again the graphics are being emulated it's a lot more thinking that's going on It's a lot of work to get the Atari Falcon version of Civilization to look as good as the Amiga AGA version. That's my plug. <laughs> that is my plug for the uh, for the Amiga. Uh, Amiga is awesome. The AGA version actually even looks better than this, right? I think it even looks better. Eh, similar. But as you can see, this runs a heck of a lot faster. And, and to be fair, this looks way better than what you have on the EGA version of the Atari uh, for, for Civ. So if you really like Civ and you want to play Civ on an Atari computer and you're okay with a little bit of lagginess, this looks a heck of a lot better. Looks way better. All right, we're going to exit out of here. Quit. Yes, quit. We'll load up Civilization 2 and then we'll finish up with Warcraft. It is possible to potentially get Photoshop on here if you want to edit photos. There, I mean, there's all the software that you have on the Macintosh 2s. A lot of it will work here. lovely we have our civilization here this is vastly more playable than, <laughs> than what you saw on the 520 ST but still is it perfect no but I, in my mind something like this is perfectly playable on the, the Atari Falcon and the reason being like a, a uh, turn-based strategy game you don't have to worry about the refresh rates or some of the the lagginess of the image right i looked actually at potentially pulling tie fighter in here because there is a version of tie fighter uh, the uh, lucas arts game from the early 90s that will run on 68k uh, macintosh that said i'm not <laughs> not very confident in how it would run here right so looks great this works well i've, I've actually played this uh, in the past, quite a bit, as I've been testing this stuff out, in large part because Civs 2 is one of those games that I left the uh, Atari space for, uh, and was was actually one of the first games I got for my Pentium computer was actually Civilization 2 because you know, I lived and breathed Civilization 1 as a, as a as a kid growing up. All right, lastly, we'll just do pull, pull up Warcraft. I threw up a, a quick little short video with this running Warcraft. It does run, it does work. It is not fast, but it's cool.
And like I mentioned, I think you could probably trick the uh, the 60030 on the Atari 520ST to running this, but it, it's sluggish enough with the 68060 and the uh, the MMU emulated graphics here. I don't know if I'd even want to try. Well, let's just do this single player game. I know I don't have the CD. Let's start with the human campaign. Build four farms, build a barracks. And what you can see, I don't know if you can you can tell with the mouse moving across the screen, but there is some significant choppiness with that. And as you can probably, you may be able to tell there's a lot of frame skipping that's going on. But it works. We'll have my guy attacking my town hall. And chopping some wood. Is this playable? Uh, just. It depends upon your definition of playable. I would say just barely if you if you consider this playable. But hey, you can do it. It runs. Awesome, right? All right, so what we're going to do now, thank you, Mr. Falcon. We'll wrap this up. This is Marchintosh with a couple of Hackintosh Jackintoshes. Well, if you followed all the way, watched all the way through to the end, thank you for watching that. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it's an interesting use of these computers. Is it something that I'm going to use on a regular basis? With the Atari 520ST, probably not. Uh, in large part because I have a much better option with the Atari Falcon. I think I actually will be using that uh, to, to play Civilization 2. Warcraft 2, probably not. But Civilization 2, I think that I think so. I think it's actually usable. Loading up things like Word. Excel, uh, that kind of software. If I really wanted to, I could run Excel on this, this Atari Falcon as well. That might be useful. That might be interesting. Is it the best use of time? Is it the most efficient? No, it's not. Is it the best graphics? No, it's not. Again, is it interesting? Is it a stunt? Is it cool? Yes. All right, I hope you enjoyed my Atari version of Marchintosh with a couple of Jackintoshes running as Hackintoshes. Thanks again for watching. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.